Hi, this is Kelly from thetruthinstory.com and this is just a quick review on the Tarot of the Hidden Realm, which is illustrated by Julia Jeffrey and the book is done by Barbara Moore, which generally means and looks to be in this case as well that it's going to be a really good book. Um, this deck is quite different than the other decks that I have and it's been on my radar so to speak to pick up but I just wasn't sh quite sure about it because of the fact that the decks that I tend to to work well with are very detail oriented like the Shadowscapes deck I uh, like the Paulina deck, Shadowscapes being my main deck. There's a lot going on in those cards, a lot going on in the backgrounds, a lot of little symbols that you can pick up on or miss entirely if it just doesn't jump out at you during the reading. Um, and I found that those style decks with a lot of detail tend to work really well for me. This deck, on the other hand, is very much, and we'll go through the cards more, um, but it, it is pretty much entirely, other than a few cards, it's pretty much entirely close-up shots of people, or of fae. This is a fairy deck, although it is a fae deck, I would say more than a fairy deck, other than a couple card exceptions. It's a very realistic rendering. And as you can see just from flipping through a few of these, and we'll go through them closer, it's very much zoomed in. This is probably the most background that you're going to get on the images. It's pretty well zoomed in on figures. Um, in very natural environments and so I kind of went back and forth about whether or not that would read well for me but one of the things that I found is that it's very powerful in that zooming in because it creates um, a very internal deck in my opinion. It creates a deck that is very focused on the internal and on the seat of power being internal. I feel like it's a very strong deck. All of the images are very strong and seem very well seated in their inner um, power and so I feel like this deck is very powerful for that and something that I can use um, and for, for specific purposes so I picked it up. Um, because it is different. Like I said, I'm trying to, as I kind of build out the decks that I do get, it generally it's for a specific purpose. It fits a specific role, like the writer Wade Smith, that was a very much of a learning deck and a deck for me to work with astrological correspondences. Um, the fairy lights deck was a more masculine energy that I wanted to tap into. Um, the Paulina deck and the Shadowscape deck, like those are my detail-oriented, standard, go-to style decks. So I have had very specific reasons why I get a particular deck. And so this deck is no difference. Like I picked this very specifically because it does vary from my other decks in terms of detail. And that, that focus in um, aspect, I believe, um, is going to be very good for... Uh, personal, all tarot decks are good for personal inner workings, but I believe this is going to have particular power in those sorts of questions like dealing with confidence and self-esteem and other aspects such as that because the seed of the power of the cards is so internalized into the individual. Um, so it's a very thin stock. You know, people talk a lot about that in reviews. Um, and I love review videos. This is why I'm going to make some of them because I actually really like to watch them. They say to make what you like to watch. Um, it does have a very thin stock, but my Shadowscapes is like that. And I actually prefer that over a thick stock, although I do know that that means I'll probably have to repurchase certain decks that I use all the time that are thin like that, but I like to rifle shuffle or the you know, standard playing card shuffle and 
this um, size and this weight of card is really good but it is a, a rather thin thin deck and I can already see on a couple of the edges where you know they're going to get worn fairly quickly but again for me that's not a downside because I I like the way they shuffle when they're thinner like this the backings of the cards are gorgeous um, you've got the Celtic knot work um, sort of out of tree branches but then if you look closely because this is the hidden realm you can see the eyes and you're almost feel like you're maybe looking into some kind of a wood wooden creature or even kind of the feeling of like a dragon it's a gorgeous backing it is not visibly reversible uh, meaning obviously if it's turned upside down and depending on how you lay your cards you are going to know that that card is reversed I both lay my cards out face up and I also don't read reversals so I incorporate the reversals into the card I don't have the cards show up reverse so that doesn't really matter to me but that is something to be aware of um, the book as like I said all Barbara Moore books in my experience so far have been beautiful and this one just feels yeah I had people talked about that in the reviews and it's true it just has a, it just feels amazing um, it's very thorough it goes into you know sort of an introduction into tarot it goes into reading essentials which this tends to be pretty traditional in most of her books then it goes through all the cards obviously and the and the minor cards and then it has a, a section on spreads and then it has a section on fairy guides being as this is a fairy um, base deck. It's a very Celtic feeling de deck to me, which is another reason why I was really drawn to it. Uh, the major, actually it looks like all of the cards, major and minor, have a pretty good size uh, image of the card and then it has a description of the card and then it has a divinatory meaning um, in for each of the cards. So that's beautifully done. Um, I like the couple of the spreads in here, especially this one that's specific for the hidden, what is hidden spread, um, where you have the center card is what is hidden, you have the gift overhead, which is something that you can do right away to improve the situation. I really like that sort of action kind of, of space position there. Then you have a challenge that's going to be difficult, and then you have the reward. If you can overcome that, you know, this is sort of the reward to it. I really like this spread a lot. Um, and there is a second one that adds a the same similar setup but adds a past, present, and future for more information. So I do like those two spreads a lot. I haven't tried this um, uh, all around, that's what it called, all around advice where you kind of split up the major or kind of the court cards in each of the suits and then you pull something from each of it. It's interesting, different way of looking at it, but I haven't tried that. Um, so a beautiful book as per usual. Um, we'll just set this up here out of the way. I am going to have to go back in and add, probably going to add in an extra video of the full card. Um, I do really like this full card. Uh, again, we have his expression is joyous. You have the yellow um, just because I've been you know, going through all the full cards in my card comparison, uh, which I'll link a video to in the description box or a link to the video. The yellow um, that you really see in the Rider Waite Smith deck it really shows up here although it has a kind of green tinge to it but you have that bright yellow all the way through the card that is very reminiscent of the Rider weight. you still have the white flower um, although it's not pure white but you do have that indication of the white flower that you see in the Rider weight smith um, and you just have that and he's he's looking at his future transformation because he's starting this journey and he's going to go forward in transformation and he's kind of I like how he's looking at you know the symbol of the butterfly with the symbol of of transformation and he's he's looking that and he is excited and he's got that fully joyous look to it so I do really like this full card I think it works really good this is probably my least favorite card in the deck um, I just it's just aesthetically um, 
I the mustache or uh, the long mustache and it just yeah it doesn't do anything for me <laughs> but the card itself is interesting because it does talking about the magicians about manifesting your power and this particular card Barbara Moore writes about you've got the etchings and things on the stones which is kind of the seed of this power in Celtic you know you think about Stonehaven and those types of things um, and he changed your the, the card caption that she talks about is him basically saying change yourself in order to change the world so the manifestation that we do so i like this little twist a lot of times with the magician we're seeing the, the four elements and he's you know accessing all those things in order to manifest well whereas this card is much more sent like i said with these cards it's very rooted internally so you know kind of pulling your power out of yourself or making the change in yourself first so that you can manifest outward so i really love the meaning of this card and, and would love to work with it i just <laughs> aesthetically don't particularly like his face but beautiful card um, then we have the High Priestess. I love, again, you're, you're really pulled in. She's actually back looking out of the card. And a lot of these cards are like that. What I really like is that this fact that they are actually looking out of the card at you. And this is just beautiful. She's look, she's beckoning to you to use your intuition, to tap into the, the energy of the moon, to see clearly. Um, and to have all these beautiful lunar moths um, that are going up is just gorgeous. You can even see them down. There's a lot of them kind of swirling around and going. It's a beautiful card, and I love how she's beckoning out of the card. The Empress. This is a little bit different for the Empress, but you really see a sense of abundance. Um, I obviously love her red hair. There's a lot of butterflies and moths in this deck um, that are beautiful. And I'm not going to, I'm going to try to go a little quick through these, but love this because you've got the idea of Odin with his two, two crows very clearly put there. It's a beautiful, I think, depiction of the emperor. Um, the Hierophant, you know, you think of Merlin or an old Celtic storyteller, um, teacher. He very much has that kind um, look to him as he is teaching and giving information and also learning. You just see him as a kind of person who's continually learning as well as teaching. So I love that. Um, the Lovers, this beautiful. You've got this kind of fake and more um, human face, but that's just very beautiful. Uh, kind of watercolor look to it. It's gorgeous. I love this this the strength. Some of the cards have changed the names uh, and, and it makes sense. This is a fairy style. You're not going to have in the fairy realm um, in a Celtic pagany outdoorsy thing you're not going to have a chariot um so i love that uh, you just you have her on the fairy stallion so she's riding the horse with that same exuberance and confidence and seat of power that you get out of the chariot card so it works um there's a reason for changing it and i think that it worked this is probably the card that uh, the reason that i bought the deck i i really connect with wolves a lot and this image is just stunning. Now I've noticed from um, our other Barbara Moore decks, particularly at the moment, the Steampunk Tarot um, with her Strength card, she talks about the line in the Strength card and she does the same with this one as being kind of aspects of our shadow self and that ability to sit with it and have patience and sit with it and you just see her posture where she's she's just waiting to connect and connecting with the energy of the wolf um, instead of you know trying to wrestle it into submission or anything like that she's just sitting with it and her her calmness and her um, internal strength and centeredness is what is going to allow her to connect with that energy and I just uh, this card is absolutely beautiful and like I said is one of the cards that made me just say I have to have this deck um, the hermit love I love when the hermit turns up to be a woman and she just has that wise woman you've got this cave that she's going off to to do some soul searching um, I just that's a beautiful uh, that's a beautiful hermit this is another card that was changed we have the fortune fairy instead of the wheel of fortune which at first kind of threw me off because I love the Wheel of Fortune cards. Um, but I also absolutely love dandelions. And this card end up, does end up really working for me because 
you do still get the sense of cycles. You have the live, vibrant dandelions over her head. You have the intact, but getting ready to go out into the world aspect here before she blows. You have the uh, dandelion seeds blowing around, um, getting ready to either take root or not. So you do still have that sense of of cycles that are going on there. I also like the idea of intent behind this, that when you, you know, you make a wish and you blow on the dandelion, you're kind of putting your intention out there. And some of those will take root and take seed and grow. And some of those will not, that will hit rocky patches. They will hit barren ground. They will get, you know, blown into water or something where they can't take root, but there's all kinds of things that can happen. But the intent is being put out into the we're facing life with intent and um, I so I really do like that card and I think I'm gonna enjoy working with that I should probably pull these a little closer justice is beautiful um, I love how she the feather is still there because there's that aspect of when you I think it's Mott the Egyptian Mott where you um, when you die your kind of heart is weighed against the feather so you still have the sense of the scales or i still get the sense of of the scales that are there by the feather being in place um she has i want to say it was a hawk there's she has specific kind of bird feathers in her hair that it shows that she's being very discerning and she's very looking at things very closely she, she's at the ready um to meet out justice swiftly so i think that's beautiful um, here we have the hanged man. It's a beautiful uh, look of the hanged man. He's very serene. His face is filled with light and being touched by light. And he has simply made a choice to look at a situation from a different perspective. So that's a beautifully done card. For the death card, we have the Morgan, which I think is a beautiful and certainly very apt for an, a Celtic fey based deck. Um, I do like the death cards to have a little bit more of an indication of transformation a little bit more of an indication of yes something's ending but there's also something that's getting ready to begin um, but in terms of this deck i think that you know the image works very well and it's still something that i can discuss whether or not it, you physically see it in the card um, itself Temperance is rather standard, I think, for a temperance card. You still have the cups going back and forth. Um, you have dragonflies in the bag. You have a little, actually a little more background going on, but it's a beautiful card. Uh, they've changed the devil card to shadow dance, um, which I do think works. Um, the devil card is one of my favorite cards, especially in the shadowscapes deck. Um, and I really focus with, for me, the devil card really focuses on abdicating power, um, giving over power and and you have still having the ability to get yourself out of out of the addiction or the habit or the bad situation you're in but that you have at some in some way abdicated your power um what i do like about this is that it, it he's inviting you to come and dance um, and come and enjoy life and to come that there are parts of our shadow aspects that we shouldn't shy away from that they aren't bad we should be able to dance with our shadow side um, but it has sort of that and for me it all still holds that inherent warning because if you know anything about fairy lore you know you should never there's sort of power in dance and you, there's stories of of uh, fey or people beginning to dance and and fey music and being stuck just dancing and dancing not being able to stop not being able to get out of it so that sort of idea is still in there so but it does have a little bit of sense of come and let your wild side out but then there is still that inherent warning that you maintain your seat of power which i believe this whole deck does so that works for me 
the blatched, the blatched, the blasted beach um, instead of the tower, which again makes sense out in a Celtic um, naturalistic environment, you're not going to necessarily have a tower. So I think that this idea of the tree, which is kind of, would be the symbol of a tower in a forest kind of setting. You have the lightning. This still represents that um, unplanned, that quick change that you really weren't planning for. Um, so I think this depicts it very well. They did a good job with that. Here's the star. Some of the child images or small fairy images starts to get a little bit cute. There's only a couple of them. Um, this deck, I, this particular card I, is, is actually pretty beautiful. Again, we have a lot of moths and butterflies, so very much a, symbols of transformation and again that seated rooted power internally that I think is beautiful. Um, so that's the star. I love the moon cards. This is another one that made me want to buy this deck. She just seems to be so powerful. She seems to be so in touch with that darker side, you know, sort of the darker side of the moon. And she uh, just is just gorgeous. Her posture, her facial expressions, the horns, you know, I just think it's an uh, absolutely stunning card. Um, then we have the sun, again dandelions, which is awesome for me because I am a great fan of the dandelions. Don't consider them weeds, but consider them to be beautiful flowers. Here we have more of that coming out of this. It actually looks like it's kind of pulling out of the sun, which is, is gorgeous, that idea of transformation coming out of the power, it's the sun's power. So that's beautiful, um, works. Here we have um, number 20, Life Renewed, which would be Judgment. And at first I was kind of thrown off by, you know, a little girl, say, sitting there. Um, but I absolutely love this card because often the Judgment card, you know, the traditional Rider weight Judgment card, you have sort of the angel up above and blowing the trumpet and the dead are rising you know to come forth and to to face their judgment um so many of the decks have some variation on that um even shadowscape you still have sort of an angelic being with a trumpet um steampunk tarot too you have an angel kind of up above with a gramophone which is pretty awesome um, but still and people look like maybe had been an accident and they're coming coming up for judgment so you still have that traditional um judeo-christian sense of the judgment or the final judgment in the card that you know i can work with it and it's fine but it um is a slightly off-putting for me this one is beautiful because you get the same sense of it's the life renewed is what it's been called and you have this acorn that is starting to um take root and so you know you have the original oak tree and this is the new life coming out of that oak tree and starting fresh so the same concepts of rebirth and starting fresh are are in, inherently in this card in a, what i think is an absolutely beautiful um, depiction of that that kind of removes the judgment day connotations which wouldn't work within a celtic phase type deck anyways but for me that's just an absolutely beautiful card um here we have the world which again is a beautiful card you definitely have the gaia mother earth um she's just completely secure and strong like this again when you talk about the seat of the power even the colorations kind of circling around her her belly and you just think of that internal seat of centeredness and she is just completely centered in her being she's even green i love the dreadlocks you just just that mother earth and that completeness um, and I love the spiraling that's going on there. It's just a beautiful card. It's a beautiful depiction. Obviously, if you have an issue with artistic nudity, um, I want to say this is the only card in the deck with it, but I guess we'll see. Um, beautiful card, though. I love it. Um, 
the only the all of the aces have animals instead of human beings which i think is really cool and it works quite well i loved when i first saw this that the ace of the wands was a fox because in the Shadowscapes deck, which is my main working deck, there are foxes in, in all the wand cards. So that works really well for me. Um, I'm just gonna go through these a little quicker so we don't end with, a, with too, too long of a video. But um, this is one that I don't really like. It's not that I don't like the image, but a little bit. It's a little cutesy fairy for me. Um, I don't really, can, I have to work with this a little bit more in her description of it. It's not the traditional sense of the two of wands where you usually sort of have the two of wands and they're kind of looking out. Um, I, yeah, I haven't quite come to terms with this card. It's probably, a, I don't really like the magician look, but I can read that really well. This is probably my least favorite just in terms of how the inherent meaning kind of gets a, a change that doesn't quite quite work with me, but I need to work with this a little bit more. Um, beautiful, absolutely stunning Three of Wands. That's gorgeous. Five of Wands, Six of Wands. Beautiful again. I love the red hair. Again, we've got sort of these moth, night moth that's going on and the tattoo work on her is beautiful. Um, so again, I mean, look at this card. Like, there's so much meaning and strength and emotion that is evoked in these images. That's why I really just feel like it's such an internal um, deck of cards. It works really. This one, love it. Now, I have heard some people say they don't like it so much because it reminds them of the girl from Brave with the bright red hair. I love it. Or somebody said it looks like Kira Knightley from... Um, from Arthur, from the kind of realistic King Arthur movie, which I love, and that doesn't really detract anything for me. Um, you don't get the immediate sense of movement. A lot of times you have the, the wands actually in movement where this is kind of drawing back for the movement, so that's a little bit different, but I do think it's a gorgeous card and don't really care. <laughs> this one also just is just stunning. You really get the fire, you get the sort of I see phoenix out of this so that's just absolutely stunning uh ten of wands gorgeous love the red background again very simplistic very much focused in but look at the eyes there's just so much emotion that's evoked and this page oh, page of wands he's gorgeous love this knight of wands and I'm gonna try to go a little quicker just so you can see all the cards um, Queen of Wands, King of Wands, love the Ace of Cups. I have always, since I was a child, been fascinated with otters. Um, so I love that. Two of Cups is beautiful. Pretty standard, Three of Cups. This one people have talked about, and this is an absolutely beautiful cup. Uh, cup. Well, it's a cup card. <laughs> we have the four of cups and there are three seals and then she's actually the fourth seal because these are selkies. And we have this sense of her being sort of stuck between worlds. She's in the water, but she's in her human form. Um, so she's sort of not quite content with being a seal or a selkie in the water and she's not quite content with being a human. So there is that sort of discontent that is inherent in the card that I think is really beautiful. Gorgeous, Five of Cups, so how powerful she looks. Her hair has this mane of these sort of spirit water horses. It's just gorgeous. Six of Cups, beautiful, Seven Cups. Eight of Cups, um, I really like how you have the phases of the moon and he's kind of turning away to go off. Um, I, I, this part I particularly like where you get the moon phases on the cup. Nine of Cups, Ten of Cups. I do also like where you get different, you don't just have young people here. You do tend to feel like you have, even with this, you've got a man that looks a little bit older and here you have, you know, a younger man, and then there's, you know, young boys. You definitely get more of a, most of the decks that I have, there's, a, other than specific cards, you just, everything kind of feels like they're young and beautiful, and we do have some different ages um, 
in this deck that I think is beautiful, given that it's a fake card, you know, a fake deck, which it could have been all very young. This is a beautiful page of cups, Knight of Cups, Queen of Cups, and the King of Cups. Ace of Swords, we have a Heron, which is beautiful. I love that they use birds again. I, you know, with the Shadowscape deck, the birds are the swords, and that really works with the element of air for me, so I'm glad that they stuck with that. Um, two of Swords, you have a choice here. I This is a beautiful, Three of Swords is one of my favorite cards um, also, and I just love this card. You don't have any swords in it. Um, you have three roses instead. Her hands are actually damaged by the thorns, and you can see blood on her on her dress and you see blood on her hand so she's been been hurt she's been damaged um and she's you know has lost she's felt loss um, but you don't have the actual swords it's absolutely beautiful her face just evokes that sense of loss that i think is just beautifully done it's one, probably one of my favorite three of swords four of swords you don't have again swords you have four butterflies um, so they don't necessarily, and this whole deck is like that, that, you know, they don't necessarily have five pentacles and the five of pentacles, but there's often some, uh, something that represents the particular number. Five of swords, how powerful is she? Um, usually they, you do have the fighting and, and this is beautiful. Um, that's gorgeous. Six of swords. Ugh. I'm, swords is my <laughs> is my suit, and so that you know, if, they, if they don't speak to me, I have a difficult time with a deck. And I think this is they oh, look at that. That is strength. Love the raven. Beautiful. Oh, gorgeous! Look at that nine of swords. Look at her position. I mean, it's just an owl. Uh, I just. The artist did an absolutely beautiful job. Now, this one's a pretty scary Ten of Swords. I mean, this is definitely... But it's interesting because generally it's a figure that has had something done to them. So it's a figure with about ten swords stuck in their back. Um, that's the traditional image. It's just something you know, sprawled on the ground with a bunch of, of swords in their back. So it's usually an image of somebody that has had something done to them. Whereas this one, we come from a different aspect. Um, either that person that was going to be beset upon to get stabbed 10 times has turned around and faced um, and is fighting back um, or we have the person who is going to be doing the stabbing of somebody you know it's a very very different perspective for this card this is one that I still need to set with a little bit um, and see but it opens up a really different possibility for this card beautiful page of swords oh, absolutely beautiful Knight of Swords, beautiful Queen of Swords. I love the sword suit. And the King of Swords. Look at, oh, the porcupine or the hedgehog. How sweet is that? For the, That's a beautiful Ace of Pentacle cards. Two of Pentacles, so you've got the two flowers. and But you still have that pensive look. Um, that's just beautiful. Her, her, the, uh, again, the artist control over facial expressions and emotional, um, evoking emotions from expressions, I think is just beautifully done. Um, here we have the three of pentacles. This is, I, I want to say, other than the aces, this is the only one that doesn't have a figure in, in the cards. Um, but I, this, and this is typical, I think actually, again, with my Shadowscape deck, the uh, Four of Pentacles, I believe, has foxes maybe protecting against uh, badgers, but um, you just, this does work very well. You have that very much her, uh, the mother defending her cubs, which is beautiful. This is one of my favorite Five of Pentacles. I love the Five of Pentacle cards anyways. The Steampunk Tarot uh, Five of Pentacles a perspective I think is absolutely stunning. Um, and you know, you normally have the stained glass, but here we have that, you know, you can kind of get that feel for it in the stonework behind it. But how beautiful is this? I mean, you get the sense of destitution you get the sense of being outside um, of 
the natural order of things or outside of society, but they're not alone. You know, they have each other. They're not alone. They're helping each other. It's just beautiful. Their faces, um, it's just stunning. That's a beautiful card. Six of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles. Love her pregnant belly. Her face, just, just beautiful. Eight of Pentacles. Like, you just feel sort of that raw power as he's working with a forge that's just very well done look at that one the nine of pentacles beautiful with the bird on her fingers love it ten of pentacles got the standing stones very important yeah, this one too again her body the body language of hers just has that sense of being grounded and a feral energy sort of that kind of primal energy in a lot of these cards and the positions because here you kind of have to look a little bit but it's actually you got her foot here and her arm is here and she's just I just love some of the positioning and the like the wild power that she puts in the way she does things and we have the knight of pentacles beautiful queen of pentacles so very lush very the colors of the autumn i'm an autumn person anyways i think that's a beautiful queen of pentacles and then the king of pentacles how beautiful we get the holly uh, and the ivy back here kind of very much have that sense of fatherness of grand even um god grandfatherness but you very much a sense of a father figure which is, is a beautiful card um so there we have the tarot of the hidden realms it's a beautiful deck love it like i said it really handles well it shuffles well um it is thin but it shuffled but see you can see where even with just a little bit of use that i've had with it 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 does the edges are kind of getting eaten up similar to my shadowscape but personally i don't mind that because i love how they handle and i like the thinner car because i do like to rifle shuffle so beautiful deck of cards i definitely highly recommend it